Hi guys. Um, really glad to see so many of you here, and uh, I'm l really looking forward to uh, lots of fruitful discussions with a lot of you during the next couple of days. So please take these next 20 minutes as kind of a springboard for, di for ideas, and uh, yeah, come and grab me at any point. Uh, it's a rare opportunity we get to see each other and talk face to face, so I'm really looking forward to that. So today I'm going to be talking about um, two things. So designing um, arrogant apps, uh, how to design them, how to get started with the UI part of it, and then also about Lorikit, which is something uh, we uh, kicked off end of last year, which is uh, kind of building on Aragon UI, which is our um, uh, component framework, and then making it more generic. So uh, just a little bit of an introduction. Um, so myself and Pierre, who uh, develops Aragon UI, worked together previous projects at, on Ubuntu uh, on similar UI toolkits, specifically for phone. And I also did some work with Matrix on Riot, making it easier to use. And I think it's a re recurring theme that you see a lot of really amazing open source software, but there's a lot of unlocked potential because it's not easy to use. So it's a, it's a, it's a real shame. And I, th I think uh, hopefully what we're building with uh, Lorikit will enable people to uh, make it be um, better to use, easier to use. So how do we get started designing apps for Aragon? So I think. Uh, check out this design repo on GitHub. It's the uh, best place to get started. You've got uh, source files for design, sketch files, um, uh, exports, everything like that. You've you got issues where you can see where the design is going. And then there's another repo, repo called Aragon UI, so Aragon Dash UI, so that's the actual toolkit. So I recommend you start with those two. We're also building uh, more documentation online for like guidance on what to do and what not to do, but for now, I'd get started here. Uh, I was going to do a demo of the toolkit, but we don't have a like a laptop here. So if you go on ui.arcon.one, you can see it for yourself. You've got really nice uh, renderings of all all the components. Uh, so that's probably the best best place to to do that. Um, so why is why is this important? Why is it important building these apps for? I think there's a, there's a couple of things like we have a lot of um, good basic uh, apps that cover a lot of use cases like the token manager voting, uh, finance, permissions, uh, and so on, uh, soon to come payroll. But I think, uh, like Stefano was saying before, there's so many different use cases, and sometimes those different use cases require slightly different approaches for what you want to do. So. You may want to ne need to manage files. Um, you may want to have a different voting system, liquid democracy or pewter key, wh whatever it may be. Um, and depending on the organization, you might have specific needs. So I think we'll, we'll build the basic building blocks, but it would be great if we get um, the ecosystem w and where people have a uh, scratch to kind of itch it themselves to, to quickly build uh, software that helps themselves and then integrate that with Aragon. So Aragon's got a really great uh, foundation for doing all that, both on the smart contract level and the Aragon OS level, and then on the UI toolkit level that helps you build stuff really quick. So with, with Ar Aragon UI and Lorikit are is, is really kind of a tooling for you to do the um, front end side of that really quickly and, and make it look good and easy to use. Uh, and there's going to be another talk on Nest later today, but uh, I just wanted to call out a few that would be really interesting for you guys to check out. So that planning tab is, is great. Um, Espresso is, is, a, is a great uh, platform as well. And then there's one from Level K for Future Key. So if you're interested in building Aragon apps, I think check out the Nest program. Check out what others have built for it so far. And you'll be surprised what you can um, put together relatively quickly. So. Lorikit. Um, why are we why are we doing this? What what is Lorikit? Aragon UI is something we've built over the last year or so. So I've been working on Aragon for about a year now, which has been an amazing experience. We built all these kind of internal components. Uh, spent a lot of time trying to get those right, and we thought, okay, this is great. People can build apps for Aragon specifically. We can build our stuff with this, but. It's a shame that it, uh, it couldn't be, if it couldn't be used more broadly. So 
Well, we thought we'd uh, try and generalize it so that any type of open source project, really, uh, specifically decentralized open source projects, have a really good baseline design system to use. We've focused on making these components really production ready, uh, work great on mobile, work great on desktop, spend a lot of time on that. So. Uh, we have a pretty mature system of React components. That's not to say that we don't need more. Like we have a, uh, like the basic components there, but still there's always need for more specific components. And as as you start building apps for Agon yourself, you you realize you may need a, a certain type of control that doesn't exist or so on. But we already have um, have a lot. So uh, yeah, about 200 PRs and uh, contributors. Like this, I had to update this slide uh, because. Um, I gave the same talk. By the way, if, if somebody was from DevCon, I uh, apologize for it doing almost the same talk, but I have to update this slide because there's, there was about 50 more PRs and uh, seven more contributors in just a couple of months. So it's really great to see, see more people taking part. Uh, so with Lorikit, we want to do a design system for a de decentralized web. What I mean by this is um, uh, kind of a mod very modular component library that can be used across different projects, not just by Aragon. So something, I guess, similar to what Google does with material design, uh, but more spe specific for decentralized uh, use cases. So having the base components, but then also components that um, address the needs that we have with Ethereum sometimes can be quite difficult to use. You have all these long addresses. So and like the, the, the whole like latency with on-chain transactions is, is pretty bad and so on. So with Lorikit, we want to build the base level components as well as more complex uh, UI, sorry, UX flows than to address those um, decentralized specific issues. We want to make it pretty generic uh, by the look and feel. Like I think the, the Aragon UI is, is already quite kind of uh, modern and quite, quite um, uh, I don't want to say generic, but kind of uh, Paired back, so minimalist, but we want to make it even more so, so that it doesn't really uh, attach itself too much to a specific brand. So it could be used by any project. And so to that effect, I think uh, the more uh, people we have working together on this, I think everyone's going to, to win. Uh, we really hope people will build their uh, components and contribute them back to the the um, project, so we can all share a greater library of projects. And this is not just for developers. So I really want to work together with more designers. I know we have probably a majority developers in this audience, but also a few designers and product people. So I uh, really kind of want to keep this inclusive for people who just want to better build better user experiences for Ethereum projects. And we've started talking, since, since we uh, announced this uh, in DevCon, we started talking with Status, Pontus Network, Ethereum Foundation. They're all very keen to collaborate on this. So I really see. Um, a lot of potential for building really great, great uh, quality-based components together, and then making it generic enough, themable enough that it can be used by all these different projects. That, in the end, they might look different, but they all share the same and reuse the same same uh, uh, base code. A little bit about React components. That you, I, I wish you will come to uh, us afterwards so if you want to go into details. But uh, this should are pretty easy to extend. We made them very themable, so this is kind of what we spent last uh, month or so on making a theming system where it's easy to make a, a design system specific to one brand, but when, to, when you want to generalize it enough, so it can be used by a lot of different um, brands or projects that might you look very different, then, then we needed to get that right. And we're still working on that, so uh, it's a good time to get involved. Uh, we're kind of testing it whether it will uh, extend well enough that it can be used by very different different projects. So great time to get involved. And we really want to target. It's, it's, it's very important that this performs really well, um, feels native. Uh, otherwise, people are not just not going to use it. So we spend a lot of time on this, and yeah, we we um, we're focusing on 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 this a lot. So to have this kind of 50 frame per second native feel performance as a goal. This is how some of the com components look like. Uh, I recommend you, you go and check this in detail on lowercase.design or ui.aragon.org. Uh, so we, you can see what components we have already and can play with them. There's also, if you install the um, Aragon UI um, repo, uh, there's a 
there's a dev box there where you can, it's, it's pretty useful uh, if you want to start messing around with this in React, you get everything in one page. So um, come to me if you, if you want to find out how that works after this talk. We have layouts for desktop and mobile as well we've, that we built for ourselves and we want to again generalize these so um, these layouts work for very different use cases, different, um, different types of information displayed. But uh, yeah, so we, ha we have another announcement uh, over these next couple of days. I'm not going to go into that in too much detail about mobile, but just to mention that, that uh, out of the box you get some responsive behavior as well. And we are working on design guidelines that will have a set of best practices and uh, UX patterns. And we are doing some use testing over the next couple of days. So if you're interested in participating, uh, that would be great because uh, we really want to, especially if you're a developer who wants to start building apps, we'd like to know how to make the developer experience better for, for people who want to start building stuff on top of this stuff. So. We're interested in what's, what's uh, missing for you guys that you're not getting from the current guidelines or the cur current uh, docs that we have have today. And uh, yeah, we have uh, some source files already available for Sketch, uh, something for Figma pretty early on, and we're looking to do stuff for Framer as well, where you have more interactive components to play with. And then just as some examples on specific like uh, components that we have to address the, some uh, UX issues in, in the Ethereum space. So one is Ethereum addresses tend to be really, really long. Uh, they take a lot of space on the screen. And they look kind of ugly. So we built these badges where you have the identicon on one side just as a kind of quick visual reminder when you're looking at the page with a lot of addresses, you can, you can kind of identify your own. Uh, we, we have human readable names for this as well with the NS. So uh, let's see if we can see that. So so this will work with Ethereum address addresses, ENS names. It'll also work with um, different types of entities. Uh, so like tokens, when we're showing tokens in the in the UI, you can just click on it, you'll get the Ethereum address for that token contract. Same for apps. Because all these apps are essentially uh, have the Ethereum uh, behind them, so you'll just be able to quickly click on the app name and just get the get the address really quickly, the the version of the app and so on. You see on either scan, uh, we're working on something that you may be able to name these things as well. If you have a, an Ethereum address you don't recognize, just to name it locally for for yourself. Um, so in the future there'll be more that's sort of functionally baked into this component. Uh, things. Again, things specific to the Ethereum domain space is dealing with latency. So we really want users, when they do something on chain, in this instance, um, I'm sending funds somewhere to the finance apps specifically. Um, we want users to be able to get an idea of what's going on. So rather than then it just disappearing somewhere, you don't know what's going on really. Uh, we want to um, show something in the UI that reflects what's, what's happening. Because these things may take like up to a minute or two. So it's pretty disconcerting to users if you don't know what's going on. So kind of one of the design principles is to just keep users informed all the time, like where, where are we th with these things? Uh, and that may require uh, like showing the status like in an optimistic way even before it's being mined and showing, showing uh, um, some kind of idea of how long it may take to, to get mined. Uh, some other components we have for, for these things are like toasts, uh, like you see on, on material design, where if you do something, do you just get some feedback of it Im immediately on the screen. So this is, this is a common component you can use for various use cases. Uh, then we have an activity panel that shows all your kind of on-chain transactions in one place, so you, you always know where to go. Uh, whenever you have uh, transactions that if it failed or if it's succeeded or if it's in progress, you can always go to this one place and you'll, you'll see where, where those transactions are and what's happening with them. And you don't have to, yeah, yeah, you don't have to start guessing what's going on with this. And this works pretty nicely on mobile as well. Uh, so yeah, you'll just be able to 
able to quickly see where you are with different transactions you have. We have other types of notifications for when apps require your attention. Uh, if the voting app has a new vote, you should you should uh, take part on. Uh, I, d I don't have them here, but uh, so showing users um, where to draw their attention rather than just showing a lot of stuff on the screen, screaming for attention all the time, or not none, which is the other end of it. Uh, in in some instances where you do on change stuff, I think it's 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 good to have a set of guidelines on on what to do with with, um, with us. Something else I want to mention quickly is RadSpec. I don't know if you guys have heard of this before, but uh, it's, it's a really nice way of um, bundling kind of human re readable uh, description of what the transaction you're about to do is. So I think we're working with Mask on this, on, on bil um, building into the signer as well, and hopefully I think with Framer too. So we'll s you'll see these already on the Aragon UI. So when there's a transaction before you do the signing, you see that you see the the kind of the blob bit, and then you'll see uh, a human readable, just plain English version of what that means. So check it out. This is, I think, is really cool. Another kind of user experience enhancement to blockchain stuff. That doesn't get a lot of uh, attention or a lot of uh, use for um, or enough use right now. Is is motion, and uh, we think it's really important. So. It really helps uh, reinforce the mental models or of you know especially when you have multi step processes kind of where things are where to find them what happened and this is another thing we've uh, are bringing into Lorikit and Aragon UI so we are using a library called React Spring and I'm very happy to say that the um, the main uh, main person behind React Spring has actually decided to join Aragon so. Paul is has joined Aragon, so we'll be we'll be going even deeper on these uh, animations in the future. So, uh, it's I think is a again a good place if you're a developer, you wanna you wanna build something that you've seen really really good interactive experiences. Uh, so we'll have some good presets for you guys to get started with. An example of just uh, how you can use these uh, animations when you're moving from one section of the app to another, for instance, when you showing graphs when you bring in new 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 ele elements onto the screen so we'll have some of this baked in and then t tutorials and guidelines on on how to build your own that's it uh thank you very much like i said i'm really looking forward to conversations with many of you so please come and talk to me if you want to find more detail about how to use these or get involved yourself thanks <laughs>